is a story about an extraordinary team success and it's a story about an extraordinary individual success. There really wasn't anything special about us, about any one individual, but what was extraordinary was the potential that was within us. We go out of our way to make it more difficult for ourselves. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit odd, but and it's all about style. And um, the idea is that when a, a climb or a mountain involves a higher degree or level of commitment, it also inspires a higher level of performance. And that, what, that's what we're after, at least that's what some of us are after. And each time I went out to do a new climb, to take on a new challenge, I discovered new strengths. We are more than we know, and once we realize this, may we never settle for less. To climb Mount Everest by a route that had never been climbed before in its entirety, a difficult route, and to do it in what we called, what we considered as mountaineers, as climbers, in good style. What does that mean? It means to climb the mountain with the minimum amount of resources and the maximum amount of efficiency. Now, their odds of success are not so good. But if they do succeed, they make history and they change the game. What you figure out pretty quick in this place is that the only constants are change and adversity. You never know what to expect from day to day other than it's going to be hard. We've got very little time to do a whole bunch of work. Small problems or small challenges become big problems in a very short time. You have a very limited amount of energy and you can't afford to squander it on just surviving. If you're just surviving, failure isn't far behind. If you can't get up and shoulder a load day after day, you're marked as an inconsistent performer and you don't get a chance to go on that final summit big team because people aren't going to want to place their bets on you. We've been working for four years. Who's it going to be in the end, the most consistent performer? It never feels like you got enough strength. It never feels like you've got enough resources, that you rested well enough, that you've got the conditions you need, that you want, that you want to do what may well be the most difficult thing you've ever done in your life. And what's your choice? You go home or you stay the course. Thriving is not about working harder. It's not about carrying a heavier pack or working a longer day. It's about using what little you do have really well. When things get really difficult, is I got this little mantra that goes like this, better as possible. And for me, that triggers optimism. I start getting creative. I start getting really innovative. I'm inspired to do that. to have this, oh, this uh, belief that the only useful personnel on these big expeditions that could justify taking up space and eating food were climbers. This woman, Jane Fearing, volunteered to serve as our base camp manager and cook for the two months that we were on this mountain, two and a half months at this mountain. Now, I wasn't too sure about Jane because I thought, why would anybody want to serve 12 prima donnas? in this boring, thankless job. She volunteered. I was suspicious. She brought a sense of spirit and she brought a sense of humor that put to shame any self-importance or kind of specialness that we may have assumed that we had that made us different from one another. She made a huge, huge difference in cultivating this, this all for one, one for all kind of culture that we had in our team. And she was on the radio every morning and every evening. She was the common voice. She was the home. I had no idea that she'd bring something like this to the team. And that's part of thriving. I believed that my chances of reaching the top of this mountain 
hinged on my willingness, not my ability, ability isn't the issue here, but my willingness to bend and flex and bend and flex my perceptions always towards this goal of, of thriving and of being open to and recognizing opportunities and resources wrapped in, in very unfamiliar packaging. The biggest challenge for me in the next four days was to overcome these terms that I had in my own mind for how I was going to do this, how I was going to do the most difficult thing in my life, and that was to have, I had to have the perfect setup, and I didn't. We were out of manpower. We were out of time. If we were on any other mountain today, we wouldn't be climbing in these kinds of conditions. We'd be out of here. It's not possible. It's not possible anymore. Let's turn around. Instead, he stands just below us in the brunt of the wind and he sets his feet apart like so, so he's not going to get blown over.